Hi everybody. My husband Bob, behind the camera, and myself have been in social isolation now for 30 days. And we're still married. You know, at our age, we're not going to get divorced over a little thing like, or a big thing, like uh, the uh, virus. So I hope you are all en enjoying life to whatever extent you can. And if you find this art course helpful in remaining calm and adding some creativity to your life, uh, I think that would really be, give me great pleasure that I can help you. So this is my contribution to uh, the current situation, trying to provide uh, some kind of creative uh, outreach, uh, which will help will bring uh, emotional calming. Now, last week, I talked about putting a dark blue and purple background behind a yellow daffodil, and we didn't get to see the image uh, finished. So I thought today it would be just nice to see how it came out. I could, of course, add more purple, could continue to work on it, but that is uh, the final little sketch. So today, uh, we're going to veer away from watercolor, and we're going to go into a material that's very, very basic to learning how to uh, paint and, and draw. And it is pencil, or graphite, as it's professionally called, on a white paper. Well, you could draw on other things too, but today we're going to be drawing on what's basically a cream colored paper. So there's so many pencils. Here's the standard uh, paper pencil that you were brought up with. Uh, but the ones we're more interested in today are some of the really old ones. Eberhard Faber, American Neutrals, uh, is one of the pencils that we are going to explore. This is a common pencil here. Uh, then this one is a graphic pencil, it's called, by Derwent, made in England, a 3B. Uh, and here, Black Warrior, what a wonderful uh, name for that pencil, a number two. And finally, Wolf's uh, carbon drawing pencil, made in Great Britain. So we're going to use the uh, graphite pencils that have a little bit more uh, texture to them uh, and give a broader stroke. So Robert's going to readjust the camera, and we will continue. We're going to be down here, OK? So now, will these things show up? Looking pretty good? Yes. Mm -hmm. OK. So the question we're going to ask is, what do these things have in common? A can of Campbell's soup, all right? A glass of water, all right? A daffodil that we discussed last week, and last, a lighthouse. So what holds all these objects together? In the visual world, it is what's called circular perspective. That is, how does one draw a circle so that it looks like it's uh, in the distance and part of an object, like a lighthouse or a daffodil or a Campbell's soup can? Now, when I teach this circular perspective, I always start with my favorite childhood soup, Campbell's tomato soup. It was my favorite, it still is. If we look at this can, and Robert, you're going to have to tell me if I'm tipping it in the right direction. Yeah. All right? See the top and the bottom. Yeah, we do not want to see either the top or the bottom. So tilt it up. Like, tell me when. Other way, other, other way. Other way? That's it. Okay. So. In this, when I hold it here, we can see neither the top nor the bottom, right? Now I'm tilting it because the camera itself is tilted and it has to be parallel to the camera in order to see that phenomena. You think, well, of course it has a top, it has a bottom, and those are circles. There's a circle, there's a circle. But if you hold it at what's called eye level, and for the camera, it's eye level. For me, it's not. I'm seeing the top of the can. But hopefully for you, the, your eye and the camera lens will be focusing right about here. And you're going to see sort of a flat line up here and a flat line down there. We discussed this last week with the daffodil. So let me get my drawing pad and we'll go over this uh, one more time. Uh, all right. This is a, last week was easy. This is a difficult lesson. It's not only difficult to understand, it's difficult to teach. 
particularly when we have a, a using a camera instead of being in, in real life. So in order to draw uh, an object in circular perspective, you need to make a, a, li a line that is going to represent what's called eye level. And here I am making that line using a, a straight edge here. So this is called eye level, <coughs> or if you're outside, the horizon line. All right, now turn it around. Depends on where you are. But this is where your eye will be when you're looking at that Campbell's tomato soup can. So the two sides of the can appear as straight lines. I'll be drawing upside down, and actually it makes absolutely no difference because we can flip this around, I'll show you. So here, right in the middle, is that line. And down at the bottom, there is a slight curve here, and there's a slight curve here. But basically, it just looks like that rectangle that we made last week using the cylinder. If you remember, I said, when we look at that cylinder head on, there is the Campbell soup can. And here it would say, toe, may, toe. Gee, I can even write upside down, that's pretty cool. And up here, let's see if I can do this. Okay, C, A, M, B, E, oh, I think that's a D, <laughs> so on and so forth. So there's our Campbell soup can. Now what happens if we hold the Campbell soup can up higher. Now, I don't know whether this is going to appear on the film. I'm going up higher, higher, higher. Are you beginning to see the bottom? Yep. Mm -hmm. You're beginning to see the bottom of the can, right. okay? Now it's out of focus. Okay, all, all right. right. So, if we were drawing the Campbell soup can below the horizon line, it would look like this. It's down below. We're actually looking at, there's the base beginning to curve. And the top now appears as a very narrow ellipse. If we were drawing the Campbell soup can above our horizon line, it would look like that. Isn't that wonderful? All you have to do is to don't even need to bother to redraw it. Just turn it right up, right side up. That was that's so simple, right? Now the farther down the Campbell soup goes, you see more and more of the circle. So first it's flat, and it comes down to see more and more and more of the circle, more and more of the circle, until if I were standing over it, all I would see would be a circle. So if I'm looking at that Campbell soup can, right down on it, all right? Maybe it fell on the floor. And here's the, here's the, um, the key to open it and so on. It's going to appear as a, a circle. You can't see any of the sides whatsoever. And the same were true uh, if it uh, fell in the other direction. So in between the full circle and the flat line here are a number of what we call ellipses. E-L-L-double-I? -L -L -I? -I one L. Did I spell it? One L? No, that's the one L is better. <laughs> one of the things I flunked in sixth grade was spelling E L one L. Oh, that's interesting. Ellipse. Are you sure? <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> All right, we'll go. <laughs> All right, we'll have to look and see who's right on that one. Ellipse. I think you're right, Robert. One L. Okay. So if we're drawing the Campbell soup can, we're going to. You know what? We're going to start over again. We're going to go on and flip it over. Um, here it is, flat. Here's our eye level, and we're right at eye level. And here's a, a tip, a dip here, an ellipse. So as the as the can goes in in this direction, that ellipse, elliptical shape, gets fatter and fatter, and more and more like a circle until you're finally looking down at it. So it starts out as a, a thin ellipse and then gradually 
bigger and bigger. You may have had an art lesson or two in, in your career, uh, your lives, uh, where this concept has been developed so that you have sort of an idea of what I'm talking about. Now the same thing would be true in the other direction. Here at eye level, okay, here's your eye level, it's flat. The first ellipse is very thin, and then gradually they get thicker, whoops, that's not a good ellipse, thicker and thicker until you arrive at the circle. Now one of the things that fascinated me when I was in eighth grade was learning to draw an ellipse. And I practiced and practiced. Most of the time, until, unless you've practiced, your ellipse is going to have a fat end and a narrow end. But the thing to remember is it never, never ends in a point. Okay? It never ends in a point. It never does that. It, this, because it's a circle, it always continues the curve. And there are no exceptions to that. If you're drawing an ellipse, the ends have to be curved. Never, never the eye. I'm not drawing that, you know, the great big eye symbol, right, that the kids, teenagers love to draw. And they always have this bloody, that's the, the teenagers. I used to teach middle school, you know, blood, eye shot blood. Okay, so never ends in a point. All right, now let's get on to my struggles uh, with drawing uh, a glass full of water, which is how we advertise this class. So we're going to put that aside. And instead of drawing this from right from the start, I am going to um, tell you what I did. How are we doing here? Can we see it? Mm -hmm. I could cut this down a little bit. Will that help? Okay. Is that better? That's fine. Okay. As we discussed last week, the center part of the daffodil is also uh, a cylinder. We talked about that. We talked about the petals. So we're not going to go back over that. Now, again, my husband is going to have to help me because I can't see what I'm doing here. Is this top of the glass obvious as an ellipse? It is. It is. And the bottom is also seen as it's an ellipse. ellipse. Okay. So this is how I looked at it, right, uh, when I was drawing it. So I got my paper out, this paper, and I started with this drawing. Uh, what I was struggling to show here was that this glass has a thick bottom. We see the thick bottom here on the glass. There's the true bottom of the glass. So let's turn this in the other direction. So when the stem of the daffodil uh, went into the water, it did not end at the bottom of the glass. Here, it ended up here because this was all glass. So that made it extremely uh, challenging. You can see the ellipses here to represent the bottom, uh, the very bottom, the, where the glass sits on the table, then the glass bottom. Now, what's most interesting, and some of you may be aware of this already if you've studied some art, when the daffodil stem or any other object enters the water, it is refracted by the water and does not con continue as a straight line. Is that, Robert, by any chance apparent? Yeah. You can see yeah. that it, it, it's broken, right? right? Mm -hmm. Now, where to place the stem within the ellipse? The stem enters, in this case, at the center of the glass, the center of the glass and the water. Therefore, when you're drawing it, it should be at the center. Now, when I was drawing it, I think it was over there, so mine is not entering the center. But you have to figure out where that is. This represents the top surface of the water. So the stem goes down, seems to enter here, with a slight curve shape. You see this curve here? It curves as it enters. It doesn't enter as a flat line. There's a curve. And then it reemerges 
further down. Maybe if I darken this a little bit. Is that making more sense here, visually? Are we seeing yes, more? Yes, Brighter? Okay, let's do that. Okay, so that's what's going on there. Now, another thing to remember in drawing glass, glass has thickness. And this is such an amateur mistake in painting and drawing. This ellipse for the water does not go to the edge of the glass. Here's the edge of the glass here. There's a thickness there, all right? So you have to account for the thickness of that glass and not bring your water right to the edge. The same thing is true of the top rim. Uh, up here maybe it's more visible, but this has, glass has thickness, so this line does not go to the end. The stem does not go right to the edge of the glass. It comes in a little bit here. So I say, one of my mottos is, there's no cheating in art. You can do whatever you want. There's no cheating in art. So I cut it out. I'm a big fan of doing a preliminary drawing and cutting out uh, what you want to have happen. And I got a new sheet of paper. How are we doing here, Robert? Is it showing up? So just fine. Good? Okay. Let me hold it steady for a minute so people can look at it. We can see the daffodil is in there. Uh, we can see the stem is coming out. And most important, down here, this is good because I can see through the paper. <laughs> okay. There's no cheating in video either. <laughs> I can see magic. I can see magic here. Okay. So here comes the, um, the stem, uh, the, the leaf coming down, it enters with a slightly curved shape in the center, refracts over here. The daffodil stem comes down um, here, enters in the center with a slight curve, and continues on down. Now, I had never noticed this before. This was so intriguing to me. The leaf is to my right, I guess your left, whatever. The stem is on the other side, and they refract in two different ways. One refracts to the right, and the other refracts to the left. I had never noticed that before, and I puzzled over it, and I said, I bet I know what's doing it. The glass is curved, all right? The water is curved. So therefore, these objects over here bend this way, and these objects over here bend that way. Let me hold it just steady for a minute. Can you see it clearly there? Yes. Holding it steady. Right. Look at the refraction to the right and the left entering the water. Now how did I learn that? By observation. By looking. Looking. Using your eyes. Looking at it. I didn't take a science class in physics to tell me what happened. I looked at it. So the most important takeaway from this whole lesson is if you want to draw things accurately, observation is the number one clue. Got to look at it, to figure it out. All right, when I got, I love the way the daffodil came out. I had a lot of fun drawing the daffodil. And then to balance my composition, are we showing up again? Good. I figured it just needed something down in this corner. So I made up a lemon. I drew it from memory, uh, but I like the, the composition now, you'll notice, here is the daffodil with a strong line coming down, and then that leads to the curve of the lemon. So we have a curve of the lemon, a curve of the glass, your eye goes up, it hits the curve up here, there's the curve, like a lemon-like curve, back down to the lemon. And even the lemon, now let's go up to the leaf. Here's the curve of the lemon, up the leaf, and curving out this way. And notice I made sure that the leaf was shorter than the daffodil. And I love that sensuous, sensuous curve of the leaf in and out, curving down. So I'm very happy with this drawing. I love drawing, that's what got me into art, was being able to draw, and I'm very pleased with it. Now, we have a few minutes when I'm going to discuss a drawing nightmare. All right, are you ready? If you can draw this, 
you go to the head of the class. And I didn't quite get it right. So I'm not, I'm not at the head of the class. I'm up to about a mm, B, a, a minus. I'll say A minus, okay? I said, let's try something really, really, really hard. And I got this glass out. How is that showing up? It's good. Good? Okay, thank you, Robert, for doing the filming, because I don't, this is very helpful. This is imitation cut glass. Uh, very popular in the 19th century in America and England. A lot of it was pressed glass, uh, and it's still very popular. So these glasses, which we purchased at Macy's for $3 a piece, are basically imitation cut glass pressed in a mold. And I love them. I think they're very uh, handsome. Uh, they're inexpensive. A wonderful example of a manufacturer. So I said, OK, let me see if I can. Oh, oh isn't that fun? OK, let me see if I can uh, draw this. So again, I'm not going to recreate my, my drawing process because it's way too complicated. So the first attempt looks like this. All right, let me move this down here. OK. Are they showing up? OK. All right. Um, well. It sort of looks like the glass, but it's not up by standard. Um, and I said, how, you know, what's going on here? Uh, these long lines up split here and descend in two lines. That's what makes the indentation here. This is an indentation going in. So there's a straight line that splits into two narrow lines, and then that somehow or other begins to make these um, curving back and forth shapes down there. Uh, and to make this even more devilish to draw, up at the top, it's not a true circle. It's uh, a flat-sided circle. So one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, I think, or eight, eight or nine. Um, no, it would never be nine. It has to be um, an even number. Of flat surfaces. So you're not really drawing a classic uh, uh, ellipse. Uh, so I got so frustrated with it, I said, well, OK, we have to go back to observation. So I put a piece of tracing paper. I love tracing paper. No cheating in art. Whatever it takes to learn. Perfectly OK. Whatever you need. So I put a piece of tracing paper over it and began trying to figure out how those lines fit together uh, with pen, right? You know, and I still. No, I said, I don't understand it. What is going on? So then I shifted to this. I'm only going to show you half here. I said, well, OK, let me analyze it this way. You know, see if I can figure out what on earth is going on. And then I had a breakthrough in thinking about this. And the breakthrough was, I said, I'm going to reduce this to a flat pattern. If it's flat, and then you curve it like this, we'll be able to see what actually happens. So I began analyzing it as a flat pattern. Uh, and I actually began seeing that there were diamond-shaped parts here. Each one was a diamond uh, with an indent. So, as you can see, I went over it in pencil, and I went over it in red, red, then I went over it in ink, uh, and I finally figured out that it's not that complicated a pattern. The pat basic pattern is a diamond with a cross through it. Oh dear, I didn't draw it very well. That's the basic pattern. A diamond, all right, there's your diamond, and there's the cross. Once you understand that, then this is indented. This goes in, this goes in, 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 in. All right? So there. OK, that's the basic pattern. Now, if you repeat that pattern, you are going to get this. So here's each diamond crossed in the middle, diamond crossed in the middle. And then we see how rhythmic this pattern is. And that allowed me, then I said, OK, now we're going to curve it like the glass, we're going to curve it around, 
And then I could see that the diamond lines began to curve. Now, they're not flat because you, you notice this goes in. This is not straight down, it goes this way. So that adds to the complexity. Uh, before I did my final drawing, I did one more sketch, all right? This one, and I did this by putting it over the top of, lost, yeah, all right. I wanna make sure we get through this because I think I wanna show you the last version. Okay, I put this piece of tracing paper over this piece of tracing paper and began to sketch it uh, with the raised parts. And then uh, with that breakthrough, uh, I was able to go through again and, and draw the, the glass. So, so here we are. It's not perfect, but it's, it's, it's way ahead of uh, my first version here. If you see the difference, um, you can see there's a, a tremendous uh, um, improvement in the sense of the glass and the um, indentations and the water and so on. Uh, where this drawing is a failure, and why I only get an A minus for this, is this is not correct up at the top. I don't have the right number of facets, and frankly, I was much more concerned with trying to render the bottom than I was the top. So, um, you know, I, I could do it over again. No way, no way. I'm not going to draw this glass another time. I did it just for you, <laughs> just for the video. All right, next week uh, on Art and Life, this is Beth Neville um, with my husband Robert on film. Uh, we are going to take on a problem that will probably be much more interesting to most of you, and that is how to draw a lighthouse, which is essentially a very similar to a glass, except that it has sloping sides. So I hope you enjoy this. Uh, we're coming on once a week with a new class, and uh, you can go back and look at the old classes, the ones we've done already, and we uh, appreciate your attention. Uh, thank you for uh, watching, and I uh, hope you uh, enjoyed this, and look forward to seeing you again next week when we're going to talk about how to draw a lighthouse. Thank you very much.